As for me, I trust in the Lord. Let me be glad and rejoice in your mercy, for you have seen my affliction. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who renew the world through mysteries beyond all telling, grant, we pray, that your church may be guided by your eternal design and not be deprived of your help in this present age. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Lo, I am about to create new heavens and a new a new earth. The things of the past shall not be remembered or come to mind. Instead, there shall always be rejoicing and happiness in what I create. For I create Jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and exult in my people. No longer shall the sound of weeping be heard there, or the sound of crying. No longer shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not round out his full lifetime. He dies a mere youth who reaches but a hundred years, and he who fails of a hundred shall be thought accursed. They shall live in the houses they build and eat the fruit of the vineyards they plant. The word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his good will. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, Forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me.
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Lord Jesus Christ. Seek good and not evil, so that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus left Samaria for Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his native place. When he came into Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all he had done in Jerusalem at the feast, for they themselves had gone to the feast. Then he returned to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine. Now there was a royal official whose son was ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and asked him to come down to and heal his son, who was near death. Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, Come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, You may go. Your son will live. The man believed that what Jesus said to him and left. While the man was on his way back, his slaves met him and told him that his boy would live. He asked them when he began to recover. They told him, the fever left him yesterday, about one in the afternoon. The father realized that just at that time, Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. And he and his whole household came to believe. Now this was the second sign Jesus did when he came to Galilee from Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. A journey from Capernaum to Galilee would be roughly north of 20 miles. So if you and I were to walk, let's say, three miles per hour, that would be walking at a decent pace without resting, that would be a seven-hour journey, more or less. So this royal official, if I had to speculate, he would probably require two days to make that journey from Capernaum, where his son lay ill, to Galilee, where Jesus was at that present time. So that would be what we call an arduous or a difficult journey. Okay, it's a difficult journey because of the time required. And yet he, in his humility and in his desperation, he made it on behalf of his son. Pope Francis, in commenting on the three, three types of Christians, mentioned that the first type of Christians would be those who will not make the journey. These are perhaps Catholics who believe in the church, in the sacraments, but they, they won't come to Mass, nor will they go to confession. It could be sloth. It could be just, they, it's not important enough for them. When people give me excuses, I always tell them, we always make time for the things that we want to do. People will say, oh, I want to go to daily Mass. Well, there are two types. There are those who are here, and those who are still at home hitting the snooze button, okay? So we always make time for the things we want to do. So Christians who will not undergo the journey. And then you have Catholics who are all about 
signs, and wonders. They need to see things that are colorful, that are traumatic, and so forth. Oftentimes, I, I have people tell me, I'm waiting for a sign, Father, whether I should enter the seminary, whether I should take this job, or marry that person. And I, I don't think things work that way. Okay, it's not all so much about feeling all elated, because the emotions come and go like the weather. To me, the signs are the sacraments in its simplicity. Under the appearance of bread and wine, the words of absolution, and the water of baptism, just the simple things of life. The wonders would be, well, every day I'm rec I recognize I'm, I'm one day closer to eternal life, to my exit from this world. So just looking around and, and seeing things, how things are passing or fleeting, that's all the wonders we should be looking for, the signs and wonders. So if you desire to go to, let's say, make a pilgrimage to St. Peter's, to see the, the beautiful church there, or to go to France to visit Le Sou, I would say, well, looking at you, you know, you have children, you're busy, why not imitate St. Peter's in his humility, in his tears of sorrow, in running back to our Lord, because you can't get on a plane and go to Rome right now, or instead of going to France, why, why not imitate St. Therese in her humility when it comes to the little ways, doing the little things with great love. So not, just not be Christians who are always looking for signs and wonders, but look at right, what is right in front of you, the simple things of this life that we sometimes overlook. And then the third type of Christians would be those who are going to make the journey. They do things that are difficult or arduous. So I'm going to laud the second graders who just made their first confession, first reconciliation this, month, this Saturday morning, this past Saturday. They were very well catechized and instructed by our second grade teachers. They all know their act of contrition. That requires a lot of work. And so whenever, there's nothing more beautiful than a very cute second grader reciting the act of contrition, something that I would estimate that the majority of adult, of adult Catholics do not have that memorized. And I'm not going, I'm not using this as an opportunity to disparage anyone because I have a very poor memory and I have a very hard time memorizing anything. So if I wanted to know, okay, Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins, and so on and so forth. I tell people that come to me in the confessional that if you say that prayer one time a day, just take out that smartphone that you have, Google it, Google it, and just say it, I guarantee you within a month you're going to have that prayer memorized. So the third type of Christians are those who are willing to put in the work to undergo the long journey, like having to memorize our prayers. You are here because of your household. You are that prophet. Your preaching will not be accepted at home if you have teenagers, presumably. Okay, you are that prophet who is not going to be respected in his native place at home, for example. So instead of having recourse to, to telling that teenager who is going to be a little bit obstinate, why not offer up your Holy Communion for the conversion of that household, as we hear about in today's Gospel? And then how about offering up your prayers and sacrifices this day by not always insisting on having things your way, as we like to tell our young people, and offer that up for the conversion of some individuals that are just walking on that busy Baker Street who never would occur to them to make the journey inside. And in so doing, you will find that there's always lots for us Christians to do throughout the day by looking for 
after the spiritual needs of our neighbors. As we continue our Lenten journey, let us seek the Lord's mercy by laying before him our needs and concerns. For the church, may her Lenten disciplines of prayer, fasting, and sharing bring forth within her a harvest of grace and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those in leadership positions in our country and throughout the world, may God encourage them in their decision-making and help them meet the needs of their people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, may Christ the healer bring them relief and give them the strength they need to endure. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those preparing to be baptized this Easter, may the Holy Spirit continue to deepen their awareness of God's loving and transforming presence in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in faith, and we pray especially for Jean Sullivan, the father of Mrs. Biles, our principal who passed. We pray for the repose of his soul, and may they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray especially for our illustrious pastor, Father Augustine, for whom this Mass is being offered. God of mercy and compassion, hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May we receive, O Lord, we pray, the effects of this offering dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from old earthly ways and be renewed by growth in heavenly life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults. Raise up our minds and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions, adore, and powers tremble before you. 
Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving thanks, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, and Ton, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I will place my spirit within you and make you walk according to my laws and my judgments you shall keep and observe, says the Lord.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May your holy gifts, O Lord, we pray, give us life by making us new, and by sanctifying us, lead us to things eternal. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.